Mount Sinai is one of the most famous mountains in the world. While it doesn't claim the title of the highest, this mountain holds significant importance for world major religions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. It attracts not only interested tourists, but also skeptics and scientists who, in their research, make shocking discoveries. But can we today find the actual location of Mount Sinai? Have scientists and researchers been able to geographically pinpoint the location of the mountain? While research points to various possible locations of the biblical Mount Sinai, in this video, I will tell you about the most well-known and prevalent theories. Mount Sinai is famed as a place where the Israelites emerged from Egyptian slavery. However, the precise location of this mountain remains the subject of heated debates to this day as different researchers propose entirely different theories. Scientists have also weighed in on the issue, and naturally, their opinions differ. When have scientists ever agreed on anything? The most common belief about the location of Mount Sinai is a massive granite peak in the south-central region of the Sinai Peninsula between Israel and Egypt. It stands above sea level at 2,285 meters. By comparison, the height of Mount Everest is 8,850 meters. Despite scientists differing in their views regarding the route the Israelites took during the exodus from Egypt, this location has long been recognized as the true one by many scholars of the major religions, including Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Pilgrims, scholars, and hermits have visited the place for millennia. The earliest records of it were made by Eusebius of Caesarea in the 4th century AD and participants of the pilgrimage of Agiria during their journey through the region in 381 to 384 AD. In 530 AD, the famous St. Catherine's Monastery was built to the foot of the mountain. This may be the oldest continuously existing Christian monastery in the world. It belongs to the Orthodox Church of Mount Sinai and contains a library of ancient manuscripts, including the Codex Sinaiticus, a list of the Bible in Greek, with an incomplete text of the Old Testament and a complete text of the New Testament. However, you might be surprised to learn that in Judaism, the opinion on the location of Mount Sinai is not so categorical. According to rabbinic teachings, its actual location does not play an important role in Jewish traditions. Because initially, it was not the mountain itself that was important or holy, but God who dwelt on the mountain during the delivery of the law. In other words, Mount Sinai became holy thanks to the events that took place on it. Even in ancient times, oral tradition said that the exact location of the mountain was unknown, and they did not even try to find it. For Jewish theology, the fact that the place of Moses' meeting with God is hidden is fundamental. The same applies to the grave of the prophet, which has been sought for many centuries. But that does not stop people from speculating. Some researchers propose another place as a possible location for Mount Sinai, and you will be surprised to learn where it is. It's Saudi Arabia, the place of the foundation of the Islamic faith. Saudi Arabia corresponds to the land of Midian, and so the distinguished scholar Charles Beke proposed the mountains of Bagir, northeast of the Gulf of Aqaba, as a possible location for Mount Sinai. However, opinions vary here too. Alois Musil and St. John Philby point to Mount Al-Manifa near Wadi Al-Krab, while French researcher Jean Koenig suggests the volcanic peak Al-Al-Badir. There is also a more contentious theory from the late John Wyatt that Mount Sinai was located in a place called Jebel Al-Laz. Interestingly, this American scholar had a talent for finding biblical places. 
he claimed to have found Noah's Ark, Sodom and Gomorrah, the crossing of the Red Sea, the Ark of the Covenant, and other biblical archaeological treasures. Wyatt's theory that Mount Sinai is located in the ancient land of Midian is based on his interpretation of Exodus chapter 3. He surmised that since Moses was tending to the flocks of Jethro, a Midianite priest, the mountain of God that Moses encountered must have been in Midian. Wyatt concluded that the real Mount Sinai must be east of the miraculous Red Sea crossing site in the western part of modern Saudi Arabia. He also claimed to have found the crossing in 1978 in Nueva at the Gulf of Aqaba, the eastern branch of the Red Sea. The best theory, according to Wyatt, was about Jebel al-Laz, which boasts the highest elevation in the entire mountain range of western Saudi Arabia. Wyatt and his two sons bravely and illegally crossed the border into Saudi Arabia in 1984 to conduct investigations and photograph the area. However, they were detained, their films confiscated, and the Saudis imprisoned them for 78 days as Israeli spies. Later, Wyatt returned to Saudi Arabia, this time legally, with the intention of treasure hunting, seeking the mountain of God and looking for the remains of Pharaoh's massive army, which he believed could be found at the bottom of the Red Sea. According to Wyatt's research, the famous peak consists of a large pile of granite rocks about 400 meters from the base of the mountain, on which are depicted petroglyphs of bovines, that is, bulls, cows, and oxen. Wyatt claimed that this is the great altar of Israel at the foot of Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia, and it may be the very one mentioned in the story of the Golden Calf. In making this claim, the scholar quoted a Saudi archaeologist from Riyadh University who stated that these cows and bulls were made in the Egyptian style and were not found anywhere else in Saudi Arabia. But there's more substantial evidence to suggest that Mount Sinai is located in Saudi Arabia, and the hint awaits us again in the pages of the Bible itself. According to Deuteronomy chapter 9, a stream flowed down the mountain in which Moses scattered the ashes of the golden calf he had burnt after descending Mount Sinai with the tablets of the Ten Commandments. Researchers in Saudi Arabia have discovered traces of a large water flow winding down the mountainside, seemingly starting from nowhere. They claim this ancient watercourse, filled with large water-polished boulders, is clear evidence of a rapid-moving, strong stream that made its way down the mountain after emerging from a rock. It's a miracle scientists were looking for in a parched landscape, and when they stumbled upon a large rock that appeared to be split in the middle, they speculated that this might be the very rock Moses struck to bring water to the thirsty people, and for which he was not allowed to step on to the promised land. But could this be sufficient evidence that this is the real Mount Sinai? Many scholars argue that photographs alone are insufficient to prove it and that a team of geologists needs to scrutinize the rock to confirm the researchers' claims. Furthermore, they point out that while the region is classified as a dry desert, it receives about 100 millimeters of precipitation annually, and heavy rainfalls, mainly due to tropical monsoons, often cause downpours strong enough to polish stones by the rock. The third possible location for Mount Sinai is the Negev Desert in Israel, between Petra and Kadesh Barnea. The scholars leading the exploration of this site, called Har Kakom in Hebrew, or Saffron Mountain, base their argument on the idea that the ancient Israelites crossed the Sinai Peninsula towards Petra on a fairly straight trajectory, leading them to Har Kakom, a mountain in the Negev which they claim is the biblical Mount Sinai. Excavating in the Israeli Negev Desert, Emmanuel Anati, an Italian archaeologist, 
came across traces of a vast ancient religious complex with numerous altars, ritual stone circles, and pillars. All of these were adorned with over 40,000 drawings. I carefully studied the biblical description of the exodus of the Jews from Egypt and came to the conclusion that Moses would hardly have led his people from the Nile Delta to the south of the Sinai Peninsula to then go north towards Canaan. Note Zanati. The highest mountain in this area is Har Kakom. It is here that the Italian scholar excavated an ancient shrine of a deity of one of the Semitic peoples. The found artifacts date back to approximately 2300 to 2000 BC. According to Jewish tradition, the exodus from Egypt happened around the 13th to 12th centuries BC, but it seems to me that it happened much earlier, the researcher admits. In support of his theory, he cites other archaeological data. Although such a revised chronology is not new, it is often rejected in scientific circles. One of the early refutations of the Har Krakom theory is that the shrine found near the mountain was not unique. More than 10 similar large ones have been discovered in the Negev Desert. James Hofmeyer, an American biblical scholar, says, according to Anadi's theory, Moses received the two stone tablets with the Ten Commandments around 2200 to 2000 BC. But the Canaanite alphabet, on which the Jewish one was based, only began to form around 1800 BC. According to him, the main problem is that in the Bible, Sinai is far from the only name for the mountain where God left the covenant to the Jewish people. This peak is also referred to as Horeb and the mountain of God. But why is Mount Sinai so important to Christians? The answer is simple. It was the site of many shocking events related to the life of the Israelites. According to biblical stories, after fleeing from Egypt, the Israelites arrived in the Sinai Desert. God spoke to Moses from the mountain, telling him that he would appear before the people in the form of a cloud. After three days, everyone put on clean clothes and approached the place at the foot of the mountain that Moses had indicated. God called Moses to the mountain but told him that the people were forbidden to ascend it and that this place must be declared holy. Anyone who violated this rule was immediately executed. Then, God gave Moses two stone tablets on which the Ten Commandments were written. Moses descended the mountain and recounted God's commandments to his fellow tribesmen then ascended Mount Sinai again, where he spent 40 days and 40 nights. God gave Moses instructions on how to build a tabernacle that included the Ark of the Covenant. He also described the priest's clothing for consecration. Meanwhile, the Israelites showed impatience at the foot of the mountain while Moses was communing with God. They made a golden calf and began to worship it, which was a great act of disobedience. God was angered and threatened the people with disaster. However, Moses pleaded with God to have mercy on the people, and God agreed. Descending from the mountain, Moses saw the Israelites worshiping the golden calf. His anger overcame him. He became furious and threw the two tablets to the ground, shattering them. He returned to Mount Sinai and presented the Lord with two more tablets. He returned for 40 days and 40 nights to record the Ten Commandments on the tablets. This time, the Israelites showed patience, having learned their lesson. He returned to them with the commandments, which became the basis of the Israelites' judicial system for thousands of years to come. Meanwhile, there is an even more controversial location for Mount Sinai, the place where the Israelites crossed the Red Sea during their monumental escape from Egyptian captivity. Researchers have put forward several theories, but one of the most popular is the version of Doubting Thomas Research Foundation, according to which the crossing was located in the Gulf of Aqaba. 
According to the Bible, when the Israelites realized they were trapped between the warriors and the sea, Moses prayed to God to part the waters and allow them to pass through unharmed. Afterward, the waves crashed down on the Egyptians trying to follow them, smashing their chariots and drowning the army in the Red Sea. In the documentary, Finding Moses Mountain, the real Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia, researchers led by security analyst Ryan Morrow detail their findings. Morrow's and his team's conclusions emerged after they claimed that the summit of Jabal al-Laz in the Middle Eastern Kingdom is actually Mount Sinai. According to the data obtained, the Israelites crossed from the coast of Nueva to the territory of modern Saudi Arabia. The width of the crossing is only 13 kilometers, which makes it easily passable for the fleeing Israelites. This place corresponds to the theory of one of the scientists about Mount Sinai, which is only 120 kilometers from the place where they were supposed to arrive after crossing the Red Sea. Doubting Thomas's expert Glenn Fritz, studying the crossing in Nueva, notes that the geographical location of the 13-kilometer-long coast, surrounded by mountains on both sides, corresponds to the biblical story. There would have been enough space here for about 3 million Israelites fleeing from Egypt. Also, a bridge was found across the land of Nueva, which is a natural formation at a depth of about 33 meters through which the Israelites could pass. And what's most intriguing, scientists believe that unusual coral formations here resemble chariots that could have sunk when the Red Sea crashed down on the Egyptians. The researchers tried to dive under the water, but they were not allowed by the Saudi Arabian police. Biblical scholars believe that the findings near Jabal al-Laz indicate that there was once an Israelite camp here, and rock drawings depicting cows complement the story of the golden calf. Unfortunately, this place may soon be destroyed because it is in the zone of the proposed construction of the Saudi megacity Neom which will be 33 times larger than New York. But that's not all. Scholars also disagree about whether the great exodus from Egypt ever occurred and about the timing of the great exodus of Israel from Egypt, with different researchers choosing dates that differ by as much as 200 years. In fact, disputes about timing often overshadow debates about whether the exodus occurred at all. Some scholars believe it happened in the 13th century BCE. This means it coincided with the Egyptian 19th dynasty. Let's start with the fact that the names of three places mentioned in the biblical account of Israel's exodus from Egypt correspond to Egyptian geographical names from the period between the 13th and 11th centuries BCE. Moreover, the biblical text itself contains another compelling piece of evidence for the exodus. Although these pieces of evidence are not entirely scientific, the story of enslavement is likely true. The Exodus narrative of a people fleeing from humiliating slavery implies historically authentic elements. Typically, only stories of glory and victory are passed down from generation to generation. Therefore, the story of slavery likely contains elements of truth. As the great Israeli archaeologist Yigal Yadin once said, what people would invent such a crazy story that they were slaves in Egypt and then left this country and moved to another, making this the core of their entire history? Even if you think it's too exaggerated, there is definitely some truth to it. What do you think? Did the Great Exodus really happen? Share your opinion in the comments below. That's all from me now. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Your engagement is the best reward for me. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Goodbye.